The DEA is in charge of the Controlled Substances Act. That's basically the fundamental law that it enforces. And that particular law regulates registrants. And registrants include physicians, pharmacies, not pharmacists, but pharmacies, uh, teaching institutions, hospitals, clinics, etc. Any place where uh, a controlled substance is manufactured or distributed uh, also is covered by the Controlled Substances Act. So by enforcing the provisions of the Controlled Substances Act, the DEA is attempting to reduce or manage uh, the, the, the supply chain of controlled substances until, of course, they reach the patient. Beyond that, it's out of the control of the DEA. Well, the DEA actually has two goals. One is to ensure that the controlled substances are available, so they set quotas, manufacturing quotas, production quotas, to make sure that there's an adequate supply of medicinal controlled substances. And then, of course, the second portion of that goal is to regulate those substances so that they don't get into the wrong hands. Well, the DEA's position on collaboration between pharmacists and prescribers is to encourage a very close relationship between the two because they're essentially doing very similar work but with different perspectives. The prescriber has the medical records, the examination records, the laboratory records for the patient and is making a decision on the selection of, of, of drugs for that patient. Now, in the case of controlled substance, the, the dispensing pharmacist has quote, a corresponding responsibility to ensure the validity of that prescription. Now, that doesn't mean that the pharmacist is going to go through the entire diagnostic routine again. However, the pharmacist uh, can inquire of the prescriber the basis for prescribing the particular medication, especially if there's a question in the, in the uh, pharmacist's mind as to either the validity of the prescription or, in some cases, the, uh, the, the, the appropriateness of the selection of the, of the drug for that particular patient. When the pharmacist calls a physician to double check or verify uh, the validity of a prescription, that's an official telephone call that's recognized actually legally as an official telephone call in, in pursuit of this co uh, corresponding responsibility the pharmacist has with the prescriber. Uh, the prescriber is obligated in many respects to answer that call and to verify the validity of that prescription in order for the pharmacist to then legally be able to dispense the drugs. Well, the corresponding responsibility, interestingly enough, is not defined in the law. Uh, however, it is defined by case law uh, and administrative law within the DEA. And uh, what they're expecting the pharmacy or pharmacist to do is to act as a sort of a checks and balance uh, on the prescriber. They have a corresponding responsibility to ensure the validity of that prescription. Now that's not just something that's comfortable to do, that's something that's actually required by the law. And the, 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 the dispensing authority, the pharmacist, is not permitted to dispense those drugs unless he or she uh, has confirmed the validity of that prescription. Now how they do that is up to them. It's a question of due diligence. There are a number of red flags that the DEA has already identified and, and publicized uh, that they are uh, expected to be aware of. For example, is the person paying cash? There's a higher ratio of patients that pay cash for drugs so that they avoid being uh, on uh, insurance programs or other programs that might uh, notice that they're obtaining drugs from other prescribers. So paying cash can be a red flag in certain instances. Uh, the fact that a person or a patient, for example, may live a uh, considerable distance from the pharmacy or from the prescriber is another red flag. Why, why are they here in this area getting this prescription uh, filled? Uh, another red flag might be uh, the prescription itself physically may not look genuine. It may look like a photocopy or it may be a forgery, an obvious forgery. Sometimes they misspell the drugs or whatever. It may be just simple things like that. Or it may be missing some information, such as the, the address of the patient or the name even of the patient or date of birth. So there may be some information missing from the prescription. Uh, the DEA and the regulations expect that the pharmacist will check some of these items before dispensing that drug. And if they have any questions the law requires or the law suggests that they call back to the prescriber before dispensing those drugs. So that's an obligation they actually have uh, under the regulations to collaborate with the prescriber 
uh, before dispensing the drugs. And ultimately, it's for their protection, it's for the prescriber's protection, but ultimately, it's also for the patient's protection. The DEA is looking basically for patterns. They, they understand that this is not 100% certain, absolute, positive science, that this, uh, uh, we're dealing here with uh, situations involving, in some cases, uh, human behavior, and that's difficult sometimes to uh, predict. As, uh, and so they're not looking for perfection, but they are looking to see that the pharmacist is taking responsibility here, is exercising due diligence, and is trying to protect not just the security of the drugs, but also the uh, patient's uh, health. Documentation is essential here. The uh, regulations, both federal and state regulations that govern uh, pharmacy as well as uh, uh, prescribing, uh, are very, very clear in uh, requiring documentation of each step along the way. Um, the prescription must be written for Schedule II drugs, for example. It can be called in for Schedule three, four, and five, but uh, the pharmacist then has to record that on a written prescription. And those records must be maintained for a period of minimum of two years um, under federal law. And, and again, the DEA is very concerned about uh, the records that both the prescriber maintains in the health records of the patients that show the prescribing records, as well as the records that the pharmacy maintains in terms of dispensing the drugs to those patients. Well, the key tool right now is the prescription drug monitoring programs. These programs are in place in about 48 or 49 states. They're operational in perhaps 46, 47 states. Uh, and they've been around for a long time, uh, but the more recent ones have interactive capabilities so that the prescribers, and in most cases the pharmacies, can access the systems to see the entire record of controlled substances for the individual patient. Um, and the physician can, for example, access that record to see the record of controlled substances prescribed, not just by that physician, but by any other physician in the state. Uh, some of these programs are now collaborating interstate so that you can actually get a printout or a report from several states, including uh, surrounding states uh, that may be of interest in close uh, areas that have cities or towns that are closely aligned to other states. I think the program Community Connect helps to um, identify for both the pharmacists and the prescribers uh, the, the key reasons for why they need to collaborate and why they need to cooperate and talk to one another. Because essentially, they're both striving to achieve the exact same thing, which is, of course, the care of the patient.